Okay, guys, well, first of all, I'm very proud to introduce Dan Locke in a velvet tuxedo, velvet suit tuxedo, styled after Iron Man. Now, for our audience at LGFG, uh, you know that you'll wear a velvet tux or a velvet jacket at formal events. But for us salespeople, uh, I would not make a velvet suit for somebody who's not a top closer. This is a high-ticket closer suit. Low producers, stay away from velvet. You don't deserve it. You have velvet to earn. is for closers. That's right, velvet. That's my new. That's going to be my new uh, <laughs> on, on line. Cup. Velvet yeah. is for closers, velvet guys. Is for closers, man. Uh, I have two velvet jackets, so that you know I'm the real that's deal. Right. Uh, but Dan is the high ticket closer, and Dan is going to tell us about what this suit specifically means to him. Well, for those who follow me on social media, knows that I'm a huge Marvel fan, and the first Marvel film that I watch it's Iron Man, right? And I've never watched a Marvel film, and then from then on, I kind of fell in love. And I have actually in my collection ten full-size Iron Man in my collection, right? So I'm a huge fan. So when I talk to Dimitri, I say, "Hey, you know, can we mix something that is like an Iron Man suit?" Which I think is impossible, but you pull it off. Here we go. Show the lining. That's that's kind of key here. This is the key. Look at this. Look at this. Also, it's got the. The name, the unlock, you see the Iron Man there, right? And also, what's very interesting is, look at the pockets. What, what does this represent? These are the eyes yeah. of the Iron Man, right? So where was someone like this? Where, where something like this? Well, first of all, before we even get to where somebody would wear it like this, can I ask you a question? Yes. How do you feel when you put something on that's so personal to you inside? Well, it, it feels great, first of all. And, and I think this is a conversation starter. When mm. someone looks at a suit, they know it's, it's something special. And then when I tell them, even this, the little pocket square, right? Hey, I'm a, f a huge Iron Man fan. I think that, that would make the connection and I can yeah. go on and go from there. I actually learned that's very important to have something distinguishable in your clothing, just a small detail, because if somebody is not into it, they'll never notice it. But if they are into it, they'll notice it right away. I can't tell you, like, I, I really like just the look of classic cars. And so I'll wear a suit. I have this dark green suit with some classic cars on it. And I'll sit down, a guy will look at me and you go, is that a Chevelle? And I'll say, yes, it is. And then yes. he'll just tell me the story. And all yeah. of a sudden, I'm his friend, and I don't have to yeah. do much. Yes. But there's another element about personalized clothing. And this is personalized at a very high level, is that you feel good when you put it on. Yes. It's you. It's me, yes. So, so here's a question for One our of a kind. Well, sales audience. So let's, let's do the sales thing. So when does a cold call start? It doesn't start when you pick up the phone. It starts way before that. It, in my belief, it starts with how you feel. And it is my responsibility as a salesperson to make sure that I'm in my optimal mood. Do you think that's true? Yes, very, very true. This is why sometimes people say you want to put a mirror in front of next to the, to the telephone so you know that you're smiling when you're calling versus when you get rejection again and again and again, you're like, oh man, I lose my momentum. I feel so bad. I don't feel like picking up the phone again. Keeping the momentum going is so critical. So, so wearing a beautiful piece of clothing that makes you a little bit happier on the inside. And that's one thing I teach my closer. I say, I don't care if you're closing from home. I don't care if you're doing it through the virtual camera or web conferencing. Wear a suit. You would close better, period. Mm. You just will close better. And in the beginning, they didn't believe me. Yeah. But when they see a closing sure. percentage, it makes sense. Well, there's, there's two things I think about, right? Like number one, you feel better and naturally you transfer a more positive emotion. Yeah. And selling is nothing more than a transfer of 100%. emotions. And then secondly, if you believe in attraction as a principle, which, you know, I'm sure we talk about, like, you know, the vibrations of the universe, by wearing better clothing, who do you attract to yourself? Better clients. Yeah, richer clients. I'm like, I'm like, you want clients that don't complain about stuff, that actually spend money? Like, get better clients. Be like that to attract that. And so there's a, there's, it's not, it's not a little bit of a difference that it makes to feel better and to attract better clients. It's a big difference in the long run, isn't it? And people say that don't judge a book by its cover. Good That's luck. all people do. <laughs> Good luck they by that. They judge yeah. a book by its cover. Yeah. They look at you and say, hey, does this person, let's say if I'm going to buy a, an expensive home, I'm going to look at the agent, I'm going to look at the realtor. Okay, does this person look like they deserve that commission? Does this person look like they can walk into a, a $10 million home, mm. right? Do I feel comfortable listing this property with this person? All makes a difference versus the car that you drive makes a difference. The, the suit that you wear makes a difference. It does. Cool. Now let's talk about velvet as a fundamental piece in your wardrobe and when, and when you should wear it and when you shouldn't wear it. So velvet is a formal piece. There's a couple of uses for velvet. Number one, formal events. 
So that means instead of a tuxedo, you can wear a velvet suit. A lot of people don't know that. And I'll tell you why you should consider it. Because if you're going to different parties, if you've made it as a sale, if you're like Dan and you've freaking made it, like you're getting paid a hundred grand to speak at an event, sorry for spoiling the price, but that's what this man costs. If you go up in front of an audience and you're always wearing the same thing, eventually people notice. Yeah. So it's nice to add variance to your formal wardrobe by having a tuxedo made of velvet. Number two use for velvet. You can wear a velvet jacket with jeans yes. for a very cool, casual look. That's a movie star look. Uh, when I work with Alice Cooper, I made him two combinations of velvet jackets and jeans. And velvet gives you the opportunity to add more color. You can do maroon, you can do green, you can do purple. Uh, black velvet, navy velvet, you can go into a variety of colors with velvet. And they always go great with jeans. And they go great with captain shoes, which Dan is wearing today. So perfect combination for jeans. And number three, semi-formal events, specifically smoking jacket type events. Mm -hmm. Going for a cigar with your buddies. Now, I'm a cigar fan. I don't know if, you're, if you've gone into that yet. I don't drink yet. I, I, will, eat, I don't cigar, drink, I don't smoke yet. Uh, uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Just a couple more deals <laughs> away from a good cigar. Uh, I'm a cigar guy, and a velvet jacket is an awesome thing to wear because it's so formal and yet so casual. When I go for cigars with my buddies, I'm wearing a velvet jacket, and then eventually it smells like cigars, but that's part of the charm. Let's talk about colors on velvet. So colors on formal events. This is very important. If you're going to formal events, well, let me say this. Number one, consider, consider investing into a formal event tuxedo and a velvet suit at some point. Here's why. If you're not being invited to formal events yet, pay the price up front so that you get invited. Force yourself into that room, man. I can't tell you as a salesperson starting out how many rooms I had to really sell my way into because I couldn't pay to get in, but I found ways. Now, this particular velvet suit is a maroon suit. When you're wearing maroon as the color, you do not wear maroon with a white shirt. Notice this shirt is an off-white. It's a pink hue. Yes. It's a pink hue on a maroon jacket. You can wear uh, a cream with it. You can wear a sort of light, very, very subtle green. But you do not wear white with maroon because maroon is considered an earth tone color. You don't wear earth tones with white. As you guys know, everybody has a different personality. So for example, there are the corporate types, and we love our corporate types, that are always going to wear the same thing. They don't want to stand out. But they're also the guys that are killer at personal brand. How important is personal brand? Uh, I'll share the story about the, the, the red suit. And this actually, when I was sharing with you my vision of what suit I want, is my red suit that was, I think, seven years ago, more than, right? And I felt like I still like the red suit, but I don't want so much the shiny red. I want something that's a little bit more elegant, kind of almost reflect my journey a little bit, right? Mm. Something that's elegant, something that's classy, but still red, still stands out. Because I think it takes, it takes a certain personality to wear red, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the joke was when I tried that suit on, I tried that on seven, eight years ago as, as a joke. It was, it wasn't, I wasn't planning on getting it, but when I put it on, it's like, okay, this, this feels good. This actually feels good. So with something like this, what do you recommend, right? Um, what kind of confidence they need to have? Mm. Like what kind of guys could carry something like this? I'll tell you something. I was very recently speaking with a very, very famous celebrity. Mm. And uh, this celebrity happens to be also an expert in the psychological field, mm. like a true expert. And I asked this person, I said, is it okay to status signal with your clothing. Some might call it peacocking. Yes. And he gave me the best answer I ever heard. He said, it's perfectly okay as long as you can back it up. Oh, and I thought, well, you know what? If you're a top performer that's good. and I you like back that. it up, like nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Now, Dan, let me ask you a personal question. So guys, I do think it's important to talk about our personal story here. Like mm -hmm. when you were a kid growing up in Surrey, before all of this kind of was bestowed upon you by the universe. Did you ever think you would own a velvet suit? Oh, no, no. I, I had no fashion sense. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Uh, I, I had very bad suits until I met my wife, Jenny. She was the one that said, I need to take you shopping. Yeah. She introduced me the concept of like a, pro I, at the time before Jenny, I had oversized suits, like with the pad, yeah, yeah. with like, I was, I'm talking about like $300 suits, mm. okay? Okay, so it's, it was horrible, but no, never thought, not in my wildest imagination, no. So isn't it a little bit of a prize for you when you look into your closet, even, even, even with other high-end brands that we will not name, but just looking into your closet and looking and going, you know what, well, well, that now, should cost a lot of money and I'm proud of myself. Well, now, nowadays the suit costs more than what I used to make in a month. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, I, like, I think about it a lot. It's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy, yeah. I remember I was... Uh, 
I put on a, I had a suit made, one of our suits at LGFG Fashion, it was $12,000 suits, you know? Yeah. And I put that on. First of all, of course, I'm humbled, and of course, I'm very thankful for all the things that a career in sales has provided me. Yeah. And, and I'm very thankful that you teach sales. I really am, because I'm very passionate about the topic. It's an art that's dying. And, and people that's how we met. I mean, and it's, it's so important. Content. And yeah. it's so important, right? Like, just for young men, and I'm, women too, but like young guys, if you can't sell, you're always going to be dating a league below. Learn how to sell so you can date up as part of sales. But as a young guy, you know, like, like, and at that point, I put on that suit and I thought, I'm humble, I'm thankful, but I'm proud of myself. It's like that car. When I jump into my car every morning, it's exactly the car I want. And I'm proud of myself. And, I'm, and that's one thing, too, where sometimes teaching young people that it's not okay to be proud of yourself. It's not okay to be arrogant. But it ain't bragging if you've done it. It's also interesting you brought it up. One of the things I see a lot of debate on social media, sometimes on my social media, media channels, and a lot of people say, oh yeah, because nowadays people dress more casual today mm -hmm. compared to so many years ago. Yeah. You, you look at photos from many years ago, men dress in suits all the time, but now it's all casual. And they say, oh yeah, you know, a lot of the, the you know, look at Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs and all these yeah. people, they all dress casual. And, you know, you, you shouldn't need to impress people and things like that. And then my reply is always, well, if you're Steve Jobs, if you're Mark, you dress whatever the hell you want. <laughs> Until you get there, you dress for success. And I say, don't, don't dress for your current status, dress for who you want to become. Right. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not optimal for you to tell the world to fuck off if you don't have fuck you money. So earn it first, and then, then you can act like the person you've become, and your attitude will change. Yes.